Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Hive Swap Friendsim. Before we get into this episode, um, Hussey, former author of Homestuck and all the Homestuck related things, just officially left What Pumpkin, which is the name of the Homestuck company. Uh, meaning, the guy, the Homestuck guy, is now no longer on Homestuck. Um, this is weird, and he's apparently started a new web comic visual novel called uh psycholonials it looks very similar to homestuck um and it's probably very similar to his other work like problem sleep with her bard quest which i haven't but i haven't read um psycholonials yet though i'm a big fan of problem sleuth i actually might prefer it homestuck but homestuck has so much more in it that it might just win through quantity that said trying to understand what psycholonials is about i finally understand what non-homestucks think homestuck is like where it's like yeah so there's these evil juggalos and that's not a thing about homestuck i think psycholonials is about evil juggalos as well i don't know <laughs> oh god so last time we did volume five we're on a volume six now armed with your fresh heaps of hard-won cultural knowledge you continue on your journey troll life sure is complicated not to mention troll romance you really aren't interested in getting on all of that. Oh, yeah. Both episodes last time were about um, Trollmance. Your life is com uh, complicated enough, and adding an additional level of angst on top of that does not sound ideal. Friendship is about all you can handle right now. And boy, do you love to handle it. Just get your fingers all on the <laughs> and squish that shit around. All right. Uh, Kuprum and Follicle. So, Kuprum is... Um, that is the original name for copper. Uh, it's related to, I think, the Greek or Chalcum or Chalcum, maybe. Because I know that or Chalcum is um, mountain copper. Uh, this appears to be, these both appear to be gold bloods. As I mentioned, gold bloods often have a lot of like psionic powers, as we can see here. Um, and like Solix and Solix's, uh, the term is ancestor plus descendant because of time travel shenanigans so it's dancestor but solux's dancestor matuna both have mismatched glasses on red and blue these ones have um yellow and blue that turn to yellow and uh pink or possibly fuchsia or magenta solux at one point goes blind and stuff and appears to like his eyes black out and they look like this um, Solix also has these little fangs that give him his lisp. Partially because it's funny that he speaks in a lisp, partially because he's a programmer and lisp is a programming language. Um, Elward looks cool, though. I want to find out what the deal with them is. Um, but we'll get to you. You're ready to meet someone new, but you have no idea where to go. You're just kind of hoping you'll bump into someone. Are you thinking about it? You do. You bump into someone. The troll takes a step back to look at you, eyebrows in surprise, while you stutter apologies. Then you notice the color of the symbol on their shirt and your blood turns to ice. Given what you've picked up about troll society, she'd probably be well within her rights to attack you or treat you to some very hurtful insults. Well, hey there, little buddy. You look kind of lost. Everything okay? What is this track? Listen to this. Dude. <laughs> what is this track, though? Dude! I'm getting dirt! Uh... <laughs> Turn that back down. Get out of here. Uh, I want to mention something else. There's a trend with um, dyed hair in troll culture. Dyeing hair the color of your blood would be like someone painting their own hair in blood. Like, the concept of someone having blood hair is meant to imply that they're a crazy, mad-as-fuck warrior, you know? Um... Yeah, blood hair. That's an in-joke for people who know me in real life, but only a few people. Very few people will exactly two people might get that joke and I don't know if either of them are going to watch anyway I'm, I wish to mention that so 
Sorry, I gotta turn that down on my end. Um, I wish to mention that it usually should imply that, like, she's, like, violent, I guess. Or wishes to project that. Because Aridin has his hair dyed, he's violent. Rufio's, like, a big old adventurer, his hair's dyed. Uh, stuff like that. And yeah, she is very high tier. She appears to be the same blood cast as Vriska, which I think is... Seven? It's the highest of the mid-bloods without being a high blood. Huh, that was a lot friendlier than you expected. That said, this troll's look is intimidating. She's smiling at you, but the leather jacket and undercut make you think you shouldn't fuck with her. I've done this. They also look really dope. Like, maybe this is someone whose name would look really nice in your address book. Hold on. You've been pretty non-discriminating with your friend taste so far. You're grateful for every taste of affection thrown your way, but you can admit you barked up the friendship tree of some real weirdos. But this time, you really want to be friends with this girl. In fact, it feels like earning her approval might raise her, your opinion of yourself. Or your social cash. She's just, like, seriously cool. You tell her you're lost, not that you have anywhere to be. Just seeing where the night goes, huh? Been there. <laughs> I could tell you some stories. Oh, man. I don't want to be rude, but you're an alien, right? You confirm. This is one of the few solid facts you know, and you're going to hang on to that with both hands. While they're still your hands and not your grab pods, your gesture appendages or whatever. Neat. You can call me L word, by the way. Oh, is L word a pun on like the L word, like love or lesbians? I bet you have all kinds of cool alien stories. <laughs> Didn't capitalize this L. Maybe it's coy. You want to hang with me? I know a place near here to drag a grab a drink if you want. Does she mean platonically, or is she asking you out? I know what I'm hoping for. It's really hard to tell. She's so cool and disaffected. If that was a date suggestion, she's got to be the smoothest motherfucker around. You're kind of hoping she just wanted to get to know you better. She's beautiful, but it seems like going on a date with her would be a lot of pressure. Mostly, you just really, really want her to like you. She brushes a piece of lint off of her jacket, and your desperation for her attention grows. You say yes. Oh, yeah. Alien time. <laughs> Let's go. Wait, come on. Can't you just go hang out with someone without there being some kind of whole rigmarole? Are you fated to be bombarded with the branching choice, choosing randomly between fates that almost always seem to end in some kind of violence? There's actually two places we could go. You want to try the closer place or the farther place? Fine. Fine. You'll make another choice. You tell her you're in no rush, and the farther place is fine. Takes off in the same direction she was walking before you bumped her. You fall behind, trying to act like you totally belong here next to this genuine troll babe. You walk next to cool people all the time. It's practically a hobby. After a couple blocks, though, she stops short. You narrowly avoid bumping into her again. She fishes her palm husk out of her pocket, and you can see it's vibrating noisily. She looks at the screen and theatrically rolls her eyes. Uh, 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 this is so annoying. I'm sorry, but, like, there's just this thing. I have to deal with it, I guess. I swear to fuck. She just wants an excuse to see me. It's, like, transparently obvious. Like how she keeps flirting with all my friends, too? Or just magically showing up places we used to go together? It's honestly kind of pathetic. Like... You're trying so hard to make it seem like you're over me that it shows you aren't. Lamau. You know what I mean? You may not understand the specifics, but it's clear she's including you in some kind of social situation she's dealing with. Wow, that's what you do when you're already friends with someone. You basically just skip to the front of the line. You nod and look sympathetic. You totally get it, you tell her. You have an ex like that too. Who's she trying to fool? <laughs> All right. It's like... Embarrassing we even dated. We were totally gonna request combat assignments on the same ship, too. Haha, <laughs> it's so dumb. Anyway. So if I gotta go back and I hive. She keeps bugging me about some shit she left there. I keep telling her I don't even think it's there. But she says she has all of her belongings. Another one. Itemized or something. Shaking my head. Such a dork. I'm like the best thing that ever happened to her. You keep nodding vigorously. Your neck is starting to hurt from all of the nodding. You tell L word she's probably, obviously, too good for whoever this girl is. I mean, I know. 
but I gotta deal with her shit anyway. Anyway, it's literally so dumb, but do you mind if we swing by my hive on our way out? It won't take long. She's like terminally punctual. <laughs> she already sent me her ETA on Gorgle Maps. This is a real softball. I need agonize. Tell you don't mind at all. Start to head off, then she stops and looks at you. Brow froze. <sighs> Am I? Am I being used for rebound revenge dating? I'm okay with that. You know, for an extra alternio, you're kind of cute. Oh geez, you start to feel flustered as she peers at you more closely. Are you gonna have to make it clear once again you're only interested in friendship? Uh, I'm getting an idea. My ex thinks she's so cool because she's a jade blood and they have like, a sacred duty or whatever. She makes a complicated motion with her hand. From context, you gather this is the troll version of a jerking off gesture. You will file the implications of that one to consider at a later time. But she's probably never met an alien before. Definitely never dated one. Do you think you could? we could pretend to be a thing? Like Red Rum. Just until she goes away. She'll fully shit herself, I swear. Just, you know, don't fall in love too late. Don't fall in love with me, kid. <laughs> Just kidding. Really, don't though. Your heart is beating at an unusual rate. And not even because of fear. Fake dating again? Do trolls do this a lot? There must be cultural context that makes them turn to a fake relationship for security. Yeah, if you don't have a rom romantic partner, um, when it comes time to breed, you'll be cold. So, if you ain't ready to fuck, you'll just get killed. Um, part of that, part of what makes that like more livable is that they have many different types of relationship and no one actually carries the, the child. Um, they go into those big grub moms we saw before. So, you know, on one hand, you're an experienced fake dater by now. Elward could check your references. On the other hand, you know how this ends. You know <laughs> this ends with you falling in love with her. There has literally no fake dating situation that has ever ended differently. The last fake relationship you did agonizingly circled the rim of romance before falling out and into your hands for a sick friendship rebound, but it was a close one. You might be like a quarter of the way in love with her already. <laughs> She looks like Troll Natalie Dormer. It is definitely too dangerous to say yes to this. Ow. Uh, I spent all all yesterday working out, um, and so I, I can't do this with my arms with any sort of strength. I just kind of push and hope it works. You grasp her hands, your eyes shining. Yes, you tell her. Yes, you will fake date her. You are ready to dive into this thing together side by side for as long as she needs with your whole heart and mind, whatever it takes. Oh, wow. That's, uh... You were, like, really ready to go for it. Like, about to jump right in. This is a bad idea. I don't want to lead you on. Oh, no, you overdid it. You shrink back mortified. No, you tell her you weren't going to fall in love. You weren't even thinking about it. Just thinking about helping her with her awkward situation. Uh-huh. Hey, you mentioned your ex earlier, right? Is that recent? Like, were you trying to rebound with me or something? Because if it's recent, I mean, I get it. Breakups can be hard. I mean, mine was fine. Completely mutual, but I get it. Your ex only exists in your imagination, but Elward is giving you an out here, and you're going to take it. You nod, trying to look sad. Breakups are hard, after all. That part isn't a lie, just a well-known truth of life. You know what? I can blow my ex off for now. I'm going to take you out. Take you somewhere special, where you can forget. Have a little me time, you know? I think you deserve it. Okay, a little heck up there. Maybe you managed to turn this around. You feel bad she thinks you're heartbroken, but it's comforting her reaction is to try to cheer you up rather than pouncing on you at your most vulnerable, like some other trolls would do. Actually, she's really nice. Maybe this friendship train is back on the right track after all. Ah! I was just at a coffee shop with my wife. Um, as I'm recording this, in fact, uh, we plan to go again on, like, Friday or so. Uh, it's fun. I like it. Sorry, I'm gross. Shouldn't snort my nose into the camera. 
Elwood takes you to what appears to be a coffee shop. It has all the trappings of a coffee shop. Mugs, bean grinders, fiddly little machines with tubes, people on tables working... People... Tables with people working on husk tops. Why do I read visual novels out loud when I have dyslexia? Dyslexia. I'm not a delf. Yet. The smell in the air is not coffee, though. It's earthier and a little spicy. You're going to guess ground-up grubs. Just a hunch. Here we are. Let's get something to drink and wait for it to start. You let her choose your drink. She brings you a steaming mug as something hot. You sip it cautiously. Not bad at all. No legs floating in it or anything. We actually know that um, there is coffee on this planet. Because when the, the cowgirl troll gave us breakfast... Like, there was, like, grub cakes and churned uh, lactose and, um, I forget what the other one. I think it was boiled tree blood. That's what they call maple syrup. But she just had, like, a cup of coffee. Just so you know, I don't know what your deal is, but this place is kind of girls only. You're an alien, so no one's even going to ask, including me. But just so you know the deal... Don't worry, though. If anyone does ask, I'll just say you're here with me. Dude. If nothing else, I will never fault this video game for taking me to a lesbian alien coffee shop. I've never been to a lesbian coffee shop. I should go. I probably count, right? Plus, you're cute, so no one's gonna mind. Ooh. You feel your face get hot. Wait, no, you're not fake dating. No fluttery feelings. Cool, you tell her. You love this place already. What is this place? This is... Excessive bodily force poetry. Open mic night. All of blood colors welcome. Fucking slam poetry. Now, you, now she says it, you can see a microphone set up on one side of the cafe, and all of blood is sitting nearby with a clipboard, writing down the names of people who want to perform. You ever do excessive bodily force poetry? You look back at you. Ugh. You look back at her. She's looking at you with those heavy-lidded eyes and that flirtatious smirk. Last time you let your enthusiasm get the best of you, she pulled back. But then she took you to the cool ladies only hangout. Saying yes hasn't led you wrong so far, probably. Unless it's going to be some consequences you haven't gotten to yet. That's probably fine. You tell her you've dabbled. You try to shoot her the same kind of coy look she's giving you. Is it flirting? Who can say? You're writing this wave of plausible deniability and you're never coming down. Really? I didn't think you'd say yes. That's so cool. <laughs> Dang, you should go sign up. I've never done it myself. But I like to come here and watch. You should totally do it. Till now, Elward has seemed pretty disengaged. But she seems actually excited about this. You go up. You've never done slam poetry, but how hard can it be? You got this. Go up to the Olive Blood and put your name down on the list. Alfred. You know, my first name and then my first middle name... Well, my first name is El Friedrich, but it shortens to Alfred pretty cleanly. And then my first middle name, Connor, shortens to nothing. Because it's actually short for Conchobar. But anyway, Alfred Connor is six letters each. Um, which means that that counts as a troll name. <clears throat> then you go back to Elward, giving her what you hope is a look smooth as an expensive brandy. Get ready, you tell her. She laughs like you're being corny instead of smooth, but it's good-natured, so that's okay. Settle down and watch the excessive bodily force poetry. Maybe you can pick up a few tips. Before long, you notice a couple differences between this and the slam poetry you've seen before. First of all, your unfamiliarity with troll culture is causing you to miss a lot of the metaphors. You think the poems are erotic? People are reacting like they are, but the body parts sound like someone did magnetic fridge poetry with an intro engineering textbook. It's all tubes and pushers and levers and sacks. You watch the people around you and try to react the same way they do. <laughs> Second, troll slam poetry does involve actual slamming. Several poets, it seems to be the cooler colors of the rainbow, end their performances with acts of passionate violence against nearby chairs, tables, or members of the audience. Yeah, cooler colors would indicate not the highest high bloods, but low high bloods and high mid blood. So like that little area of the spectrum, which does make sense. Equius is crazy strong. Briska is violent as fuck. Gamzee can be violent. 
Uh, Aridin is violent as fuck. Yeah. Artist, you guess, temperamental. Elwood doesn't seem surprised. One troll with a dark purple symbol breaks the mic stand in half over her knee. Elward sits up a little straighter, popping the collar of her jacket a touch higher and adjusting her hair. God, I'd die if she looked at me that way. <laughs> I wish I was that mic stand. <laughs> I've never had a girl that mean. Woo! Me too, fam. I mean, Oriate's coming out, let's be honest. For the people who want girls to step on them, you have a buffet with... Lady Alcina Dimitrescu, I think that's how you say her name, and her various vampire daughters. She's literally a nine foot tall vampire mom. And for the people who don't want women to step on them, play RE8. It's going to awaken something in you. I always go for the good girl spades, thinking I can change them. Like, it'll be different with me, you know? Actually, just I just remembered something. Um, the most well-known lesbian in Homestuck, Kanaya Mariam, is a vampire. Um, she's a rainbow drinker, a jade blood. I mentioned them before. Um, she, like, drinks troll blood and is able to go out in the sun, whereas everyone else is nocturnal. Um, but I was just, I, I remember having a really interesting conversation with how lesbians are still seen as weird on a planet where everyone's bisexual. And, like, I had to explain it to someone who didn't get how Kanaya could be a lesbian where everyone's bisexual. And it's like, well, here on Earth, everyone dates the opposite sex, normally. And people who date the same sex are weird. But on Alternia, people who date any sex are the norm. And people who only date the same sex are still weird. So lesbians are still special on every planet. True fact. Like, it'll be different with me, you know? If our hate is true enough, it's a bad habit. Nice trolls don't change. Some advice for you, kid. You don't know how to respond to this, so you just nod wisely. If you're being totally honest with yourself, seeing Elward flustered makes you feel a little flustered too. Not that you're wanting to change your mind about only wanting friendship, but you wouldn't mind if she looked at you with a little bit of the awe she's giving the purple blood. What do we do? Finally, it's your turn to perform. You got so into the show you forgot you were actually going to do this. Walking up to the front, you wish you could forget again. You clear your throat silence and then a flash of inspiration hits you had trouble understanding the troll poems because of the socio-cultural differences so maybe if you load the pieces with reference to your own world they'll assume it's good you start listing body parts you have knees spleen soul, shoulders you toss in a few celebrity names steve jobs rita moreno then you put on the most serious poetry voice you can and say yuma yuma -e. Another idea hits you like a wet fish to the face. <laughs> Maybe if you end this with some kind of violent gesture like the purple blood girl did, Elworld would like you more. You seek out her face in the audience and looking right into your eyes, <laughs> you slap yourself in the face as hard as you can. There's a smattering of lackluster claps. No one looks impressed. A few grumbles echo around the cafe. You think you may have just bombed. Your budding confidence is hit with a big load of shame, descending like wet concrete. But when you get back to Elward, she's grinning. Damn, <laughs> that wasn't what I expected at all. It's pretty funny, though. You must have had some real abdominal sausages to get up there, like, to get up there and perform like that. Nice job, alien. Give you a wink. You perk up a little. After all, you don't need to be friends with the rest of the trolls in this cafe. Just this one cool troll girl. It looks like making yourself look dumb has brought you two closer. Honestly, though, surprised you didn't do a piece about your breakup. Oh, right, you forgot about your breakup. Or rather, your fake up. Elward leans forward, her hands splayed on the table. Her black claws gleam in the low cafe light. You can tell me about it, if you want. Like, I'm over my breakup. But if you want to talk about yours, it's fine. I know it's sometimes, like, just really on your mind. Just right in there. Ah, you're starting to feel even less great about lying. You fidget uncomfortably in your seat. And you know what? You're supposed to be a good friend here. Yes, in the past it's been advantageous to just go along with whatever people say they like, say until they like you. But you and Elward are really connecting. You don't want her to like you just because she thinks you're sad. You want it to be real. You take a deep breath and tell Elward you don't have a recent ex at all. You tell her you were trying to commiserate. The warmth. <clears throat> oh no. The atmosphere immediately shifts. Elward sits back and the warmth goes out of her face entirely. What? Really? 
Oh, huh, that's not really cool. Ah, uh, shit. You can feel her pulling away. We can also see it because she's physically pulling away from you. All signs point to losing this friendship. You're so sorry, you tell her. It won't happen again. Uh, yeah. Sorry, no offense. But it's not cool to lie about shit like that. It's pretty weird. She's completely detached now, barely even looking at you. It was nice to meet you, but it's probably best if you just go. See you, space moo beast boy. Just say space cowboy. We've met a cowboy or cowgirl. As much as it hurts, you have to agree. It's best to cut your losses. You try not to let your disappointment show as you walk away. Fuck. Now I have had a dramatic friend break up. Fuck. Ah. Uh. Let's do the other ones. Interesting to see um, a duo. It makes sense, though. Wandering deeper into the city, you wash up into the shores of what looks like a rougher part of town. Comparatively, everything about Alternia is rough, but down here, the streets get narrower, dingier, the buildings are run down. Streetlights flicker, and the patrolling drones look less inclined to serve and protect, and more likely to shoot you and claim it was self-defense. Yikes! <clears throat> you haven't seen any tracks, but if you had, this place would definitely be on the wrong side of them. Again, emphatically, you don't know what you're talking about. Everything you know has been gleaned from an exceedingly painful trial by fire. But this looks like the sort of place no one cares about except the people who live there. A group of noisy trolls spills onto the street up ahead, and you quickly duck behind a row of trash cans. Oh, it's the Condus. Uh, that's the that's the like god empress in charge of uh, Alternia. You have become you have recently become gun shy around groups, especially since most of these guys look fancy and are wearing symbols in varying shades of blue. Not to generalize, but blue bloods are starting to freak you out. Everyone here messes with you, but the higher castes do it with a government sanction. These particular blue bloods look about as lost as you did several friends ago, gazing around in varying flavors of amusement and frustration. They glance nervously between each other and the looming buildings on either side. <laughs> uh, oh boy. The hot jolt of adrenaline, you realize you weren't the only person hiding in a pile of garbage. There's someone else. Two someone then, actually. What you initially take as one lumpy troll resolves on second glances into two smaller trolls, a girl and a boy. The girl is clinging to the boy's back like a very greasy slob. <laughs> it looks like a pretty precarious position, in your opinion. You've recently become an expert in falling down. They are both skinny and stringy and damn, you thought that smell was from the garbage, but it might be them. Oh, just blues living, busy living with their pathetic lives. Walking out of their hives. Straight into our trap. Idiots. Never see it coming. You ask if the trolls out on the You ask if they mean the trolls out on the street. You probably should mind your own business, but when the fuck have you ever done that before? Also, it's nice to see someone besides you getting mocked for once. You kind of want to join in the mocking. Who the fuck are you? Where did you come from? A trash creature. Born out of trash. <laughs> well, so much for not getting mocked. These two are probably equal opportunity mockers. Uh, they mock everyone. Kyle, like Polypa, had been with murder. They keep sniggering. You can't help thinking you are being called out. <laughs> you put it to them offhandedly that perhaps it is they who are the trash creatures, since they are the ones who smell like they've been rolling in it for the past few days. For some reason, this makes them laugh even harder. Coopum. Check out the badass we got here my face when freaky colbate nerd lord talks back why don't you run and cry about it yeah go and tell your lucis on us the girl tugs at the boy hair and then they're off cackling and running up the street with a weird stumbling gait oh they leave you all on your loan some french friendship opportunities withering on the vine you probably dodged a bullet but you can't prevent the oncoming Damn. I usually try to go for the long ones. Um, but I also want to play this as true to me as I can. And I also am now only getting one ending per troll. Otherwise, I would have gone back and... You know. Gotten some more of... Gotten some more of some edgy troll girls, you know? And troll boys. And this guy. I didn't even see this guy. I'm probably going to do like a proper playthrough of my own just to 
get all the endings because I want to read them, uh, but not on camera because when I did this with Kingdom of Loathing as well, when one has a free game or a cheap game and then you show all of the content on YouTube, perhaps that could make you a bad person. Since I want to encourage more people to buy and play this for themselves. Um, I don't think I have like a lot of crossover with Homestuck. I know like four or five people on my channel are, but like, I don't think anyone else is. Uh, but yeah, I've been Alfred. This has been Hive Swap Friend Sim part nine, I think. And we're on volume seven next time. Ooh. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, bye.